On the 7th October, Hamas fighters poured out from Gaza and attacked Israel from multiple locations. In the ensuing fighting and what are clearly atrocities against civilians, more than 1,200 Israelis have died. After recovering territory seized by Hamas, the Israeli military retaliated by conducting an extensive aerial bombardment of Gaza. In the first week alone, the Israeli Air Force dropped more than 6,000 bombs on Gaza, and the number as of the time of this recording will be much higher. More than 12,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces. There is overwhelming evidence that Israeli forces have not taken reasonable steps to avoid killing civilians. According to the Israeli Defense Force themselves, the emphasis is on damage and not on accuracy. You really got to ask yourself, without accuracy, how do you ensure the damage is inflicted against the right target, and not just killing civilians? According to the NGO Action on Armed Violence, each Israeli airstrike caused an average of 10 civilian deaths, which suggested a notable change in Israel's targeting approach. In the 2012 and 2021 bombing campaigns against Gaza, each airstrike produced an average of 1.3 and 1.7 civilian deaths, respectively. So it is obvious that Israel has abandoned precision in favor of destruction. Israeli ground forces invaded Gaza starting in late October and have reportedly encircled Gaza City in the north and have turned the whole place into a battlefield. The vast majority of the world is demanding a permanent end to the fighting. Many countries have condemned Israel for using disproportionate force against civilians, and some countries have openly accused Israel of committing war crimes. And these are not some sort of pariah state, but include some fairly influential countries, some of which are key allies of the United States, like Spain and Turkey, for example. The one country, the strongest nation in the world, which has given unequivocal support to Israel, is the United States. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and President Biden continue to say that Israel has the right and responsibility to defend itself and prevent the Hamas attacks from happening again. The U.S. promised Israel that it would receive whatever it needs to support an offensive against the Gaza Strip. Two U.S. carrier battle groups have been deployed to the region to deter other actors in the region from joining the war on the side of Gaza. In fact, U.S. destroyers have shot down cruise missiles fired by Yemen's Houthi rebels that were headed for Israel. And in fact, American special forces have already entered Gaza to carry out reconnaissance. So, in some sense, the United States can be considered an active participant in Israel's war in Gaza. Furthermore, American weapons of war are being sent to Israel in huge quantities, from artillery shells to aircraft bombs and Iron Dome interceptors. Biden is asking Congress to approve more funding to buy weapons for Israel and Ukraine. However, while the unequivocal support of Israel by the U.S. government makes sense in terms of domestic politics, it undermines Washington's efforts to win the global majority. And I use the term global majority to refer to the entire world including the global self that actually contains most of the world's population, as opposed to the concept international community, which basically only includes America and its allies. Biden's decision to link Ukraine's struggle to that of Israel, arguing that both countries are democracies under assault, is designed to try to convince Congress to approve military aid for both countries. Biden's comparison was good congressional politics and good domestic politics, but it was terrible international politics. Washington's support of Israel is undermining its efforts to build truly global support for Ukraine. 
many countries in the global south, and indeed the global majority, are seeing America's position on Israel-Palestine as evidence that it is applying international rules selectively, according to geopolitical interest rather than universal values. This inconsistency is hugely damaging to Western claims of a so-called rule-based international order, where might does not make right, and the strong does not trample the weak. The global self is perceiving that America and its allies are not bound by their own rules. The rules only apply to elders. Western diplomats fear that a double standard by the West is being seen with increasing clarity by the rest of the world. As the scale and audacity of the destruction of Gaza became clear, more and more countries are voicing their opposition to the war. Counting among their number are several important US allies. One of the most influential of these is Turkey, a major power in the region and member of NATO. Ankara has become increasingly critical of Israeli actions and has recalled its ambassador to Israel. President Erdogan of Turkey said that Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel is no longer someone we can talk to. We have written him off. Erdogan also said that Turkey would bring Israel's human rights violations and war crimes to the International Criminal Court. In retaliation, the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs criticized Erdogan's comments as another step by the Turkish president that sides with Hamas, the terrorist organization. End quote. In South America, Colombia has recalled its ambassador to Israel and has asked the Israeli ambassador to leave the country. Colombia said that it will seek to prosecute Prime Minister Netanyahu for war crimes. The president of Colombia said on X, formerly Twitter, that Colombia will contribute to the complaints filed by Algeria on war crimes in Gaza. Make no mistakes, Colombia is a staunch ally of the United States. Both Israel and Colombia are classified by the US as major non-NATO allies, legislatively on the same level as Japan, South Korea, and Australia. Elder South American countries have followed suit. Strong words have been used by Brazil, another major non-NATO ally. Speaking to the local newspaper, Brazilian President Lula has openly called Israel's war in Gaza a genocide. Brazil is obviously the most important US ally in South America. Bolivia took the matter one step further, severing diplomatic ties with Israel. Bolivia further accused Israel of committing crimes against humanity and called on the Israeli government to cease attacks in the Gaza Strip. Chile, another key country, also denounced the Israeli offensive as, quote, a collective punishment on the population of Gaza. In response to the backlash, Israeli foreign ministry said that not recognizing Israel's right to essentially continue the war would be tantamount to aligning with Venezuela, Iran, and Hamas. America's key Arab allies in the Middle East have reacted negatively, as you might expect. They are Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan. All three countries have denounced Israel's actions as war crimes, ranging from the bombing of refugee camps, hospitals, and ambulances to the displacements by force of the Gazan population. American diplomats like Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, are finding themselves shunned in regional capitals. They are finding that their words carry less weight than before, and that Arab countries are coordinating closely with the Russians and the Chinese in the background. American proposals are not being trusted, and Uncle Sam's image in the Arab world has been irrevocably shattered. 
the African Union has previously suspended Israel's observer status back in February 2023 as a result of opposition by several key member states, the most important of which is South Africa. South Africa has withdrawn old diplomats from Israel. In the United Nations, the African Union offered strong support to the UN chief Antonio Guterres, when Guterres said that the attack by Hamas on the 7th October did not happen in a vacuum, and that it should be understood in the context of Israel's treatment of the Palestinians. Naturally, Guterres's remarks drew anger from Israel, who actually demanded Guterres's resignation. It's not just in the global south that resentment of Israel and American support is reaching the boiling point, but in parts of the West as well. Obviously, major protests are happening all across Western cities, putting pressure on governments that might otherwise support Israel to the hilt. But some governments are now slowly calling out Tel Aviv, President Macron of France said that babies, women and old people are being bombed and killed. There's no reason for that and no legitimacy. So we do urge Israel to stop. A Spanish minister suggested that Israel should be taken to the International Criminal Court, and her remarks were met with anger by the Israelis. In the United Nations, the global majority led by the Arab countries wanted a ceasefire in Palestine, but the US kept saying no. In the UN Security Council, the United States possesses a structural majority composing of its Western allies. Despite this, America has been unable to garner the vote to prevent a Brazilian resolution calling for a ceasefire from attaining a majority. As a result, the US had to exercise its veto power to stop a binding ceasefire. On the 27th October, the UN General Assembly voted overwhelmingly in favour of a ceasefire resolution, drafted by 22 Arab countries. 140 countries voted in favour, 45 abstained, and only 14 against. The US and Israel were among the 14 countries that voted against. So make no mistakes, US foreign policy is now directly countervening the will of the global majority. This is having a disastrous effect on US influence outside of the Western world. At the third Belt and Road Forum in Beijing, one of the biggest international conferences since China lifted the Zero Covid strategy, President Xi Jinping presented a sweeping vision to shape the world, and countries around the world are listening. More than 130 countries went to the summit. The two dozen top dignitaries in attendance included Russian President Vladimir Putin, and the United Nations chief, Antonio Guterres. China's international push came at a time when American wars overseas, unstable foreign policy focus, and its support of Israel's war in Gaza have raised outstanding questions about US global leadership. Arab countries in particular are becoming disillusioned about the so-called rule-based international order. The Middle East and the wider global majority are viewing Beijing's vision with greater favorability than ever before. In the holes of the Kremlin, Russian analysts revised up their forecast of oil revenue, as the failure of American diplomacy lubricated cooperation between Saudi Arabia and Russia on crude oil production. Saudi Arabia and Russia have agreed to sustain their cut to oil production, and by doing so, maintain oil prices at a high level. Relations between the Russian Federation and NATO member Turkey are better than ever before despite the ongoing war in Ukraine. President Putin is maintaining regular contact with President Erdogan of Turkey, coordinating on crisis response in the Middle East. 
Erdogan has lamented to Putin how the Western silence over Israeli actions is worsening the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Relations between the major Arab countries and the Islamic Republic of Iran have improved, as the two sides took a common position in response to Israel's war in Gaza. I hope it is clear that Western support of Israel is pushing the global majority towards the open arms of the two Eurasian powers, China and Russia.